joining us now, an organizer for the Mankato Art Crawl, the second edition. And looking at this list, um, you know, there's uh, Sidetracked, Fill-In Station, Coffee House, Vagabond Village, 410 Project, and that's only four of like 21 places. And yeah. so how does it feel um, having it essentially double in size from last year? It feels great. Uh, all these things are already here, so it's just great to like bring it all together. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything coming together, that's really a big key with something like this. And you're participating in this event too, right? With your I own art? I am. Um, so I was uh, fortunate to get a Prairie Lakes Regional Art Council mm. grant, so I just was able to just make my dream installation in my studio. Cool. Show the world, yeah. Cool. And so, um, what is your um, what is your main goal with um, with all these different um, all these different uh, you know, businesses coming together? Yeah. So a lot of times, people in business are trying to find where they jump in in art, and they just don't know if that's like a sponsorship or what it is. This is mm -hmm. a direct way for businesses and organizations to contribute and to participate in our local art scene. So mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that we get out of this is that. We have so many art assets here, um, and they're often unseen. So this is a great way for us to all raise our vibration together mm -hmm. and uh, just show everybody that, or that we don't need to seek anything else because mm -hmm. it's already here, and we can just appreciate what we have here. Almost kind of just uh, bringing a mirror to the community and being yes. like, it's, it's just a moment of saying that we actually are extremely artistic, mm -hmm. um, and we, we love our, our artists in our community. Um, and so... Like what were kind of um, were there some um, were there some surprising uh, you know additions this year? Uh, yeah, one in particular is the American Indian Affairs is having a ribbon dancing. It's kind of like an oh. indoor wasipi powwow. Yeah, that's going to be happening at the Cato Ballroom. So that's yeah. like a, when they reached out and said that they wanted to be part of the stops. So I was like really excited about that. And then the Lincoln Community Center also has a studio there that I didn't even know about. So mm. uh, they have programming. So it's going to be a great chance for people to see things they didn't even know was in our own town. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else that kind of like surprised you that's in our art scene or in our business scene when you were putting this all together? Um, like the brewery, I didn't know that that existed downtown, the mm -hmm. locale brewery, and that they had a number of MNSU students that had installations there. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to see that businesses, uh, it's a good example for people to see how businesses can be incorporated and, and welcome artists into their space. Right. And, you know, Nick was saying, like, it's a reflection that we're seeing with this impact. And I'm curious, from your own perspective, Justin, how have you seen, if at all, the Mankato art scene growing or just Southern Minnesota art growing? I've just seen a lot of people just, like, really want to step outside of their, their hermitage and stuff mm -hmm. like that and just be like, yes, we're here and we want to be part of it. We want to be part of, like, Arch and Cable, this hotel is, like, wants to be part of it. It's just great to see people like, we'll find the programs for it, mm -hmm. just set the stage, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really fun to do. And so what would be, um, I guess, how would you recommend if people, you know, be tackling, tackle, yeah. I would there's say, lots to see. Yeah, I would say check out each of these individual spaces for what their program is, because mm -hmm. their times are, the, the window is about 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., but people have determined their own hours within that. So look at this list, decide which ones you really want to see, and then plot your day from there, because there's just no way you could possibly see everything. And mm -hmm. lucky for <laughs> for all of us, you made a great map <laughs> that can go oh, with it, too. So not only do you have the list, but you have the map. Yeah. And so thank you for making this, first of all. I'm such a visual person. <laughs> so uh, this well, helps. my chaotic brain couldn't come up with this, so I enlisted the help of the eminent, our South Central students, their graphics department. Oh, fantastic. Did an awesome so yeah. we were able to pull them in and kind of uplift them as well. Yeah, for art for art. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, art. Um, uh, where can people not only find the map, but uh, more information about yep. these events? So uh, the greatest source of information is our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, you can also pick up these physical maps at uh, a number of these different locations. Wood and Spoon, Mom and Pops, Bellissimo Paint, Carnegie Art Center. Um, and a couple others, and those are listed on the Facebook page, but those are where you can get the physical map, which will help you guide through your day, um, and just um, reach out to uh, the, the page if you want to get some more direct some information. Some more information? Yes. Well, thank, thank you so you, much, Justin. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Yes, and still to come on Cato Living, we go be